back, everybody, to another edition of MLB DFS Quick Hits. Your Thursday, May 31st edition. Got a nine-game slate on tap for you. Main slate. There's two early games. Not going to get into those. Hope everybody had a good Wednesday as we're wrapping up the month of May. A little over two months into the baseball season. Absolutely crazy. I mean, we got an interesting slate on tap because we have a couple high-priced arms, but uh, very sketchy for their price point and... Overall, you're going to have to take some uh, massive gambles on the pitching front tonight. Looking at the totals, I'll give you the two early games. you got Angels, Tigers at 9.5, Rays, A's at 8. That's your two early games of action. And then on your main slate, you got Yankees at Orioles, total of 10. Cubs, Mets, 8. Pirates, Cardinals, 8.5. Phillies, Doyers, 6.5. Nationals, Braves, 8.5. Red Sox, Astros, 9. Indians, Twins, 9. Marlins, Padres, seven and a half. Rangers, Mariners, eight. So a lot of totals of the eight and a half and above variety tonight. So we have definitely stuff to dig into. When you look at the weather, uh, it's supposed to be raining pretty good in New York and Baltimore. Kind of fizzle off as the night goes. Same with Pittsburgh and St. Louis, but still chances throughout the night and then some small chances elsewhere. Hopefully we avoid the damage like we have been lately. Okay, let's do it. Pitching on this slate. Clayton Kershaw at 11-8. Not playing him. Sorry, he hasn't even gone like really over 90 pitches in his rehab. They'd be crazy to push him to the limit tonight, but you never know. Teams do weird things. I'm not paying that price tag for a broken pitcher. I have to see it. I just have to. If you want to, knock yourself out. Aaron Nola at 11-1 is at least intriguing to me. It's a, it's a steep price tag for a team that has a lot of lefties in their lineups, and you can get to Nola with your left-handed batters, uh, when you look at the Dodgers, they have a total of 3.7. Lefties, 285. Righties, 248. So still not lighting the world on fire from any side of the plate. But you can see lefties have a little more success there. They do strike out 22% of the time versus right-handed pitching. He's striking out 26% with a ground ball rate over 50%. When you're looking at Nola, he's been much, much better at home this year than on the road. He's got a 2.73 ERA on the road and 1.94 at home. Still not horrible, but only you know little less than average of less than 16 DraftKings points per game on the road. And then 11-1, we need much, much more than that. It's an interesting play. GPP-wise, I could see it being a low-owned leverage play. But it's very dicey as you have a Dodgers team where the lefties don't scare you a ton, but they have upside. You have Jock Peterson, two homers on the year, but could run into one. Max Muncy's playing well. He went deep again last night. You got guys like Cody Bellinger, who, as much as he has struggled, has that pop ability. Um, Chase Utley's technically a lefty and in the lineup. There's a, there's a few guys, as Monty Grandal should be starting. There's a handful of them. The lineup should be at least half lefties, maybe six lefties. But they're not the scariest of lefties, so it just depends on where you want your leverage to be, if you even want to spend up here. It's going to be a really dicey night with tons of bats to pick from. So Noah's ownership should be low. That makes for an interesting GPP play. Uh, last guy up top here at 9200 bucks, Jack Flaherty. This is a guy I could see being a lot more popular than Nola. $1,900 cheaper and a really good matchup at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates at home. Uh, Nola, uh, he's been very good this year. He's got four of his five starts on the road. He's still averaging 15.1. He's faced the Pirates twice this year. 11 innings pitched, four earned, 6K, he's averaging 12.2. Uh, that, was, uh, that was his last start. He, he was in Pittsburgh. He went six innings with one earned, 4Ks for 20 points. So uh, the first time through was a different Jack Flaherty. This that was early in the year. Since his recall, much much better. Uh, Ninety two hundred bucks has some nice upside. Pittsburgh's not a team that strikes out a ton. We know that very very well. They strike out nineteen and a half percent of the time. But you got Flaherty at a near twenty five percent K rate, a swinging strike rate of twelve percent, and a ground ball rate of about forty seven percent. The Pirates team totals three point seven five. Lefties two ninety four. Righties two eighty five. So. You could basically you're basically getting similar matches, a little more K upside with the Dodgers than with the Pirates. But the Pirates, um, for nineteen hundred dollars cheaper, you get Flaherty versus the Pirates. So I'm going Flaherty over Nola. Both are interesting, and if you have the cash, Nola will be low owned. It's still dicey because we know that Dodgers team can wake up. But uh, interesting play there between those two. Now when he dropped down, I'm not going to go to Lance McCullers. He can be great. We know this. He's in. He's facing Boston at home. Uh, it, it could be a lights-out, awesome game from McCullers. If you want to go there, knock yourself out. But I'm just not going to take that risk. I'm going to take risk elsewhere. Like a guy like Sean Newcomb at 8100 bucks at home against the Washington Nationals. Uh, Newcomb's been very, very good of late. He's been uh, averaging about 20 points in his last 10 games. He did get beat up by the Nats four and a third, five earned, four walks, six Ks. 
the only time he's seen him this year. But uh, overall, been pitching really, really well this season and of late. That national start was a little earlier in the season. When you look at the Nats, they strike out over 23% of the time versus right hand, or left-handed pitching. Newcomb's walks were always concerned. We've got 12.3% walk rate, but everything else checks the boxes. That's very, very good. A national team with a team total about 4.1. Lefties, 378. Righties, 249. So you got the reverse splits on tap, which will be great because, you know, you'll have the, the Matt, Mark Reynolds of the world, which can be scary. you got Rendon, who crushes lefties. you even got Trey Turner, who's actually better versus righties than lefties. But people will look at it that way. There'll be a handful of, like, Michael A. Taylor and some others in that lineup. Um, and you'll see the reverse splits from Newcomb that many will not pay attention to. So as a GPP play, this is pretty much a GPP slate, in my opinion. There's really not a lot of cash viable options. There's a couple, but not a ton. Uh, Sean Newcomb becomes very, very interesting to me at 8100 bucks. Probably one of your more cash viable plays, but it's tough to say cash viable when you're facing the Atlanta Braves. Is Tanner Roark, uh, he's 7900 bucks at Atlanta. We talk about it all the time. He's just got that comfortable floor. You know, he's, he's averaging 17.9 at home. He's averaging 18.8 on the road. He's faced Atlanta once this year, seven innings, four hits, one earned, six Ks for 26.8 points. We just saw Atlanta get shut down by Jason Vargas on short rest. That was a point of tilt on uh, for many people. That was just shocking to the world. We get Tanner Rourke facing a brace team that strikes out 21% of the time versus righties. Rourke has a, about a 22% K rate, good, good uh, hard contact rate, ground ball rate. Everything checks the box for Tanner. He's nothing flashy, just consistent and gets the job done. Uh, the Braves do have a total of about 4.4. Uh, lefties 309, righties 316. You know they have guys that can run into it. There's no doubt about it. You got Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Albies. Uh, even the lefty Preston Tucker is going to be under for Acuna, uh, Marquecas, and Ciarte, so on and so forth. The lineup is very, very good. It's been established. If they beat up Rourke, you wouldn't be shocked. But he's just got that ability to limit damage so, so well at 7900 bucks. He's a very, very uh, intriguing play today. The last guy in this range, Jose Quintana at $7,500. Yes, this is tilting because Quintana is just a disaster. But he's been really good on the road this year. In his five road starts, he has an ERA of 3.18 compared to 6.66 at home. That is scary. I shout out he's the sign of the devil. But uh, much, much better on the road this year. Going into a New York Mets team that's just floundering. Just a mess. Absolute mess. And uh, they strike out. A whopping, I was just looking at it, where'd you go, buddy? 27.1% uh, of the time versus left-handed pitching. They are horrific versus lefties. Quintana still has his really good uh, strikeout rate, his ground ball rate. He just you know leaves a few up in the zone once in a while. You have a Mets team with a 3.6 total, fourth lowest on the slate. Lefties 286, righties 353. They have an abysmal 269 Loba versus lefties and a .095 ISO versus left-handed pitching. Absolutely horrible. Horrible. Quintana at 7500 bucks. I'll sink with that ship. I think it's a great matchup for him. We've seen really, really good starts from Quintana. We've seen extremely tilting starts for Quintana. There, there, there's the two extremes. There's rarely that just middle of the pack and when he gets you 14 DraftKings point starts. It's either he pitches really, really well or he just has no feel on the mound at all. I'll take the chance that it's really, really well against a Mets team that cannot hit left-handed pitching at all. So... I got uh, in this middle range here. I got Quintana one, Rourke two, Newcomb three. Going down below now, it gets really dicey. We got three left-handed arms. We're gonna chat about here for a little bit, but um, a lot of people are gonna mention Shane Bieber. By the way, seventy-three hundred bucks, good young arm, big-time control pitcher. Going up against a Twins team in Minnesota for his debut. If you want to go there, knock yourself out. I don't not like it. I don't like it though either. It's kind of I'd rather wait and see and gamble with Quintana or one of these guys down below if you're looking for a lower-priced arm. We'll start with Wee-Yen Chen, 6100 bucks. Yes, Wee-Yen Chen. He's going up against the Padres. We love the target, the Padres. Uh, he's been much better at home than on the road this year, but his last three starts, 12.2, 14.4, 23.5. We'll take any of those for 6100 bucks in a good pitcher's park in San Diego. And you got a Padres team that strikes out over 25% of the time versus left-handed pitching. They have a team total of 4.1. Lefties 249, righties 323. They do have some thump from the right side. There's no sugar coat. It. You can target Chen with some of these Padres if you want. But uh, at the same time, he makes for a cheaper option on this slate. 
After Chin, you look at Wade LeBlanc. 5500 bucks at home against the Texas Rangers. LeBlanc's been very surprising, I'll say, this year. He's got you 13-9, 13-2, 19-7, 12-9, 12-6, 7-3, and 14-9. He's been pretty good since getting consistent starts for – and that 7-3 was a two-inning outing. So – since May 3rd, when he's gone four innings or more in every start, he's got you basically 13 or more DraftKings points. He's 5500 bucks. He's going up against a Texas team, which is dreadful versus left-handed pitching, like really, really bad. They strike out about 26% of the time versus lefties. They have a team total of 3.6, third lowest on the slate for a $5,500 pitcher. Lefties 303, righties 319. They do have a very, very good ISO at 190 and, and a, a decent low bet 316, so they can hit lefties. They strike out a ton. And you got tremendous upside with LeBlanc at 55. So I don't hate him either. And in that same matchup, you got Mike Miner at 5K against Seattle. So you got three lefties that you just really got to plug your nose and, and, and grit it out, is what it's going to come down to. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing great. Uh, Seattle strikes out about 20% of the time versus lefties. They uh, have some thump of obviously a lefty's 373, righty's 373 versus Miner. So Miner's risky. But heck, we used him last time. We've seen the upside with him, but very volatile, to say the least. So down below, I got uh, Wade LeBlanc, 1, Chen, 2, and Mike Miner, 3. So recapping your pitching real quick on this 9-game slate. You got Flaherty, 1, Nola, 2 up top. In the middle, you got Quintana, 1, Rourke, 2, Newcomb, 3. Down below, you got LeBlanc, 1, Chen, 2, Miner, 3. So yeah, not the sexiest of pitching nights. We've been pretty fortunate of late. Before we get into the bats, let me talk to you about Draft. draft Draft.com, draft in your app store. Fun, new way to play fantasy sports. Snake-style drafting, it takes less than five minutes. You don't have to worry about ownership because you're the only one that has them. You have baseball, basketball, football, hockey, golf, the works, NFL best balls going on right now, but you have baseball drafts all day, every day. Tons and tons of options, tons and tons of price ranges. And when you make your first deposit, use promo code SD Sports when you check out, and you get entry into a free three dollar tournament. You can use it for any sport. You can use it for best ball. It's whatever you want. It is tons and tons of fun. So check it out. It's Draft.com. Draft in your app store. Promo code SD Sports at checkout, and you get entry into a free three dollar tournament. Let's check out the bats on this slate. When you look at the catcher's position, you got Gary Sanchez in Baltimore at Hitters Ballpark against Andrew Kashner at forty five hundred. Makes for a very very nice play. Uh, Evan Gaddis crushing the ball lately, especially against lefties against Drew Pomeranz at 4K. Just a uh, tip of advice here. Pomeranz getting destroyed this year, as you'd expect. The Astros have a 5-4 total, and it's lefties 365, righties 380. Um, when you look at the Yankees, they have a 5-4-5 five, five, uh, five, total, the second highest. Astros were the third. Against Andrew Kastner, it's lefties 374, righties 426. So Sanchez and Gaddis, both really good plays if you're going to go up top here. When you drop down below the 4K range, Max Stassi's at 3700 Not running to play him at that price tag, but he does bring upside to the table. Uh, you go down farther, you got guys like uh, Kurt Suzuki in his matchup. You can look at uh, scrolling farther down, you got like Mike Zunino at 34 versus Minor. We know he can, he can smack around the lefty pretty good. So he's not a bad mid to low three. Price range pitcher. A little farther down, then you get into the 2K range. Maybe a Robinson Chirinos at 29 could come into play for you. Uh, Kevin Plowecki at 28 if you're fading Quintana. Pedro Severino at 27 if you're fading Newcomb. Not the greatest plays, but they are definitely options. A good guy like Mitch Garver or Brian Wilson from Minnesota at 2700 bucks is a cheaper play versus Bieber. Those could be in play for you as well. Um, other than that, check your lineups. We will see some other ones pop up first base loaded as always freddie freeman at 52 versus tanner work definitely in play anthony rizzo at 45 the cubs are going to be interesting tonight because that seth lugo making the spot start for the mets hasn't really gone more than 30 or 35 pitches this year i'd say they'd probably go 50 at most unless they want to be the typical mets and blow on another pitcher's arm so you're gonna get a lot of mets bullpen which means you could get lefty lefty matchups who knows they'll play the matchup game at the same time it's the mets bullpen so Cubs could be sneaky nice. Rizzo's been on fire at 4,500 in play for you there. Uh, Greg Bird at 41. I can't, it's tough. He's facing Kashner, so I get it. Uh, if you want to, he's going to be low owned. He could be an interesting play for you there. Um, Mitchie Two Bags at 4K. Probably not running to play him against McCullers. You got Yonder Alonzo at only 4K versus Oda Rizzi. 
That could become a nice little play for you there. Neil Walker at 39 is a cheaper Yankee option versus Kashner, but not one, again, you're running to go play. When you slide down a little farther, you got Mark Reynolds against Newcomb at 3,700. Max Muncy at 37 versus Nola as a couple cheaper options there. Ryan Healy let us all down yesterday. He's 36 versus Minor. He's back in play today. We liked him a lot yesterday because 3,300 was just too cheap. He had some great opportunities, and he failed. So that's baseball. 3,600 today if you want to get right back on the horse. Farther down you look, uh, Yuli Gurriel at 35 could be an option for you there. Pedro Alvarez and Trey Mancini at 3400 bucks versus Sonny Gray. Alvarez first base, third base eligible. Mancini first base outfield eligible. Baltimore's got a 4-5-5 total. Lefty's 352, righty's 384 off Sonny Gray, who has been horrible. Watch him pitch a gym today, which would be just hilarious. But as a whole, Sonny Gray's just been really, really bad. Um, he, the, the Orioles strike out a ton, so he could be a GPP play if he thinks he figures it out. But... He gives up so much loud contact, it's not even funny. So Trey Mancini at 34 could be a nice, cheap first base or outfield option with some big upside there. Justin Bohr at 34 versus uh, Jordan Lyles could be a nice cheapie as well. Lo- Logan Morrison versus Bieber at 34. So some nice, cheaper options down below here you can definitely look to exploit. Second base position, Ozzy always at 53 is in play every day. Altuve at 49 is been swinging a really hot bat of late, so keep an eye on him. Uh, Gleyber Torres at 47 is crushing baseballs. It's crazy. He's priced up all the way to there now. Matt Carpenter finally getting that 4K price bump. He's second base, third base eligible at 4100 bucks. He's earned it, though, so if you want to go there, knock yourself out. Brian Dozier at 4K. He went deep yesterday. He's in play. Uh, you go down a little farther, like a Ben Zobris at 39 is worth a look. Jonathan Scope at 37 is in play as well versus uh, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray is just bad, 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 bad. And you might get the Orioles cheap tonight, it looks like. The farther down we go, you got like uh, Kiner Falafa we talked about with Texas, second base, third base at 34 for a cheaper option. Jose Perella, second base outfield for the, the Padres at 33 is another cheap look you can go to. If Eric Gonzalez starts for Cleveland, he's second base, third base at 33 versus Oda Rizzi. So a couple cheaper looks for you there. Other than that, might not be too much down here. Yeah, check your lineups. There's not nothing standing out at this first look. Maybe Gordon Beckham. He's like 2,700. And he's been batting ninth for the Mariners. Is another option for you. Third base, Jose Ramirez at 53 is in play. Versus Hunter is he big time in play. Chris Bryant at 49 is worth a look as well. You got Christian Villanueva for the Padres who crushes left-handed pitching. He's 4,500 versus Chen, so give him a look also. Again, Matt Carpenter at 41 is in play. Anthony Rendon who crushes lefties is 4K. He's a decent option, but I'd almost rather go... Eduardo Escobar, third base shortstop at 38, save a couple hundred in that matchup. You go down to the likes of Kyle Seager at 35, who does have power versus a lefty. Mentioned Kenner Falafa already. Uh, Brian Anderson at 33, our buddy. Cheap, cheap, cheap in that Marlins order. Johan Camargo's 3,200 versus Rourke. He went deep yesterday. Just a nice value play with some upside. The kid's not horrible. He'll have, he'll have more down days than good usually. But he's a good little ball player and uh, in a good lineup. So a good piece of uh, cheap cheap stacks and whatnot. Shortstop, you got Machado at 54. Really solid look there. Lindor at 49, of course. These are Captain Obvious is up top. Uh, Correa at 47. Gene Segura had a nice night for us at 46. I'd go back to that well if you want to. Didi Gregorius at 42 versus Kashner could be an interesting play. Better at home than on the road, but great matchup versus Trashner. Eduardo Escobar again, thirty hundred bucks. Do like that quite a bit. You load down a little farther. You got Camargo again at thirty-two. The shortstop every day is just not that good down below. Not good at all. Yeah, check your lineups. Maybe Charlie Culberson cracks the lineup at twenty-seven, or JT Riddle at twenty-seven could be a nice cheapie for you there, but not a ton standing out right now. Outfield, maybe Mookie Betts comes back at fifty-nine, but I don't know. Yeah, Bryce Harper at 55 could be a nice uh, contrarian GPP play. Uh, J.D. Martinez versus McCullers. You got the Yankees boys versus Kashner, even though they've been slumping. Ben and has been on fire. He's 49. But you got Michael Brantley at 49. He's got the best matchup up top here, uh, potentially, against Oda Rizzi at that price point. Uh, George Springer at 48. Tommy Pham at 46. But you go down a little farther, you got Mitch Hanniger at 43 versus, or 44 versus Minor. That's a solid look for you there. You got Marcakis in play. Brett Gardner's only 4,200. He's swinging a good stick. Kyle Schwarber's been on fire at 4,200, so he could be a really, really 
nice play in that realm. Same with Ian Happ at 42. A little farther down, you got guys like uh, Eddie Rosario at only 41. Another double-digit night last night in a good spot versus Bieber today. Nelly Cruz didn't go deep off the lefty yesterday. You can go back to that well today and try it out for 4K. Not a bad price tag at all for him. Uh, Aaron Hicks for 39 versus Cashner. Maybe his bat's waking up after a couple knocks yesterday. Extra base hit. Uh, ben Zobers at 39 mentioned him. Max Kepler at 39 versus Bieber could be a nice look for you as well. Everybody is really, really high on Bieber. His numbers look great. He could throw a gym. At the same time, he could go a few innings. He could get hit around. There's a lot of things you could look at with him. It's kind of a crapshoot, so that's why that Minnesota plays could be super low owned, and if they go off, could definitely could be like the Royals yesterday and win you a GPP. So interesting plays, and they have some savings for you as well. If you go down farther, I uh, got guys like Juan Soto at 37 hits lefties extremely well, so don't get scared away by that one. Let off yesterday. Doubt he leads off first to lefty today, but you'd never, never know. Farther down you look, maybe Delano DeShields Jr. leading off first LeBlanc at 36. He could be in play for you. Uh, Michael A. Taylor at 35 is interesting. Manny Margot at 35 versus Chen is definitely worth a look for you there. I mentioned uh, Trey Mancini at 34 earlier. I think that's a solid play there for his power upside in that matchup versus Sonny Gray. Uh, Jose Perella at 33 is in play for you against Chen. Talked about him already. Brent Anderson or Brian Anderson both looks there. Farther down we go towards the bottom of the 3K range. You got, you know, Nick Williams versus Kershaw. Probably not tonight, but he's been surprising people with that power of late. Robbie Grossman at 3K is definitely in play for you there. I'm looking for our boy. There he is. Fran Mill Reyes, 2,800 versus Wee Yin Chen. This guy should be in a lot of lines if you're not using Chen. A right-handed guy with just insane power. He's homered in three straight games. It's pretty much all he's going to do. He's going to go deep or he's going to strike out. That's what he's going to do for the most part. He's in a great spot for it against Chen at 2800 bucks. Even if he gets a zero at that price tag, he could be huge. Otherwise, just great savings. Like Jake Marisnik, 27 versus Pomeranz. I'd probably pay up for uh, for Fran Mill and see what we get there. So there you go. There's your bats on this nine-game slate. Recapping your pitching real quick. You got Flaherty up top, Nola two. In the middle, you got Quintana one, Rourke two, Newcomb three. Down below, LeBlanc, Chen, and Miner. So yes, ugly Ugly stuff on tap for us today. Let's look at the BBP and send you on your merry, merry way. Uh, Adam Jones, 5 for 17, a double and a homer off of Sonny Gray. When you look at uh, Judge and Gregorius have homered off Kashner, but as a team, we'll hit 209 off Kashner. That's interesting. I don't think I'm going to look too deep into that one. Schwarber, 2 for 2 with a double, nothing crazy. Rizzo's taking Lugo deep, but not big samples there. Matt Carpenter, 4 for 10 with a double and two homers off Trevor Williams. It's not bad. Ender and Ciarte, 10 for 25, two doubles, a triple and a homer off Tanner Rourke. Camargo, 4 for 7 with a double. Marquecas, uh, a double and three homers. Albies taking him deep. Freddie Freeman, 12 for 39 with four doubles. A lot to like in that one. Go down a little farther. Nothing. But Althair, 1 for 3 with a homer off Kershaw. Uh, Lindor, Ramirez, and Brantley have all taken Oda Rizzi deep. That's something to look at. Marisnik, I mentioned him as a cheapie. He's four for seven with a triple and two homers off Pomeranz. Marisnik can usually get to the bottom of, a, of an Astros order, and he hits lefties really, really well. you you got to be concerned. It's like Rajai Davis with the Indians. He can get pulled once you know the lefty comes out and they go to the bullpen. He could get moved around, so keep that in mind. But uh, at first glance, he could be a nice cheap $2,700 option. Jose Perella, 6 for 10 with a triple off Wee and Chin. Eric Hosmer's even 7 for 23 with a double and two homers. Freddie Galvis, 6 for 15 with a double. Something to look at there. Mitch Hanniger, 4 for 4 with a double and a triple off Minor. Healy's taking him deep as well. Denard Spans, even 5 for 11 with a double and a triple. So there you have it. There's your BVP. There's your quick hits. Again, top totals you're looking at. Yankees, obviously. Astros. The Cardinals have the third highest total. Miss Trevor Williams, lefties, 330. Righty's 353, so you can go with your Azunas and um, Carpenters and Martinez's and Fams and be super contrarian because they'll be low owned. Uh, the Indians versus Rizzi, you can definitely take a look at that one. Orioles versus Sunny Gray, I like a ton. The Orioles can be super disappointing, but man, you got them. They're cheap tonight. They're cheap, so they can definitely fill in for you. They don't have to be a stack. They can be fill ins or stack away, whichever you prefer. But uh, there's a lot of options, a lot of ways you can go on this slate and make things work. 
Good luck with that. Check us out on Twitter at thesportsdgens.com, at thesportsdgens. Remember, draft in your draft app store, draft.com, promo code SD Sports for entry in a free $3 tournament. I'm on Twitter at BDNTrick. Join us in the Slack chat. Tons going on there. we got a Bench with Bubba, episode 97 with Lance Brozdowski out. Really good stuff there. Uh, recorded around the bases of Bubba and Mo last night, episode 66. Tons of fun talking baseball with Mo again. We interviewed Chris Blessing of Baseball HQ to preview the MLB draft. Had some issues with the editing tool last night, so I have to redo it again today. So it'll be out a little later, but uh, plan on it maybe tonight, tomorrow morning for that one. But uh, much, much coming up. you got UFC this weekend and much, much more. Good luck on your Thursday, May 31st, uh, nine-game DraftKings slate. This was Quick Hits. I'll catch you guys later. I'm out.